Previously, we discussed the ways of retrieving data from a server through such attached models and stores. In some scenarios, though, you may also need to send some data back to the server as well. I'm about to reveal how to create, read, update and destroy data through a RESTful web service. The read action has not really changed from the previous example, so let's get started with that. We are reusing the model from the previous examples, specifying the fields we are interested in. The proxy of choice is REST, which is an extension of AJAX proxy. It simply builds AJAX requests according to the RESTful specifications, which means that it implements HTTP verbs in the transactions. Our API is located at this address, trnapi.moduscreate.com slash animals. The JSON data package we expect back from the server should contain a success property, data property as a root of data, and message property in case of an error. I'm loading the store just to check that I'm able to pull the data, and it's there. You can see that the store has generated a GET request to the API. And now we are starting to get creative. I'm going to add a new animal. Let's make it a cat, a Persian cat. And I'll do that simply by creating a new model instance. There are a couple of things that I really want you to pay attention to here. The model defines this field with date format. The date format model configuration option only tells the model how to serialize or parse data when communicating to the server. On another note, I'm not specifying the ID of the cat. The logic behind the REST proxy is set up in the way to send a create request if no ID is present and a Date request if ID already exists. The cat is now created on the client side. To push the change to the server, I will just have to save it with cat.save. Take a look at the network real quick. The proxy automatically creates a post request, sending the newly created data to the server. The server returns back an object, telling us how successful the transaction was and confirms the newly created data. The model is automatically updated with the data that was returned, which is a good thing if you want your database to normalize data or even to create an automatically generated ID, just like here. Now I simply need to add the new model instance or the cat to the store and I'll check that it's really there. We can indeed see that the store count has increased by one. At this point, I want to update the Persian cat and set it as a domestic animal. Using the record set method, supplying with the field name as a first argument, and the new value as a second argument will do the job. I need to save the cat again and I'll have a look at the newly created put request. It contains all of the data belonging to the record and the response confirms it. When developing for mobile, we really want to conserve as much bandwidth possible. For instance, I don't need to send the number of legs if they haven't changed. In the proxy configuration, I am defining the writer object with write all fields equaling to false. To show the result in action, I will change the number of flags to four. Since I made changes to the source code, I'm gonna have to reload the document and find my cat again using the source get by ID method. Let's set legs to four and save. Now the writer sends only the fields that have actually changed. No more and no less. The final CRUD action we are still to use is destroy. Simply erasing the record will do the job for us. Cat 
erase. The request contains the delete verb and the response should only have the success property back. Rem remember, don't send any data back. However, what if the request was less than successful? How would we show the error message from the response? Both save and erase methods provide the interface to interact with the request through the argument object holding ext data connection configuration. We are interested in the failure callback, but the snippet to extract the message from the response is a bit trickier. My intention is to erase the dolphin here. To get the possible message back, I will need to access the reader instance, the user get message method on the saved raw data as received from the server. It might be a bit lengthy and even complicated to memorize, which is why it might be a good idea to bookmark this video, just in case you need it someday. There, the server did not allow us to delete the dolphin, so it sent back successfuls and the message property, which we were able to properly parse and display. We have successfully covered the entire four-step data lifecycle with models. If there is something I would like you to memorize from here, it's first, when creating records, do not specify the ID if you want the create request to be sent. Second, setting the writers to write all fields option to false is useful to minimize bandwidth usage. And that translates to speed. And finally, when working with your model, do not forget to save your changes in order to sync them with the server. For your exercise, establish a model with users in your company or community. Use CRUD to create, read, update, and delete users. Use at least name and email fields along with the ID. If you don't have access to a RESTful web service, you can use ours at trnapi.moduscreate.com slash users. Before we finish, I wanted to give a special course notice. Since the REST proxy uses AJAX for communication, these requests are made cross domain. We have allowed that on our server, but you will notice an additional options request being sent just before every other request. This is to confirm that a server will allow the cross domain connection. When deploying your mobile application to wrappers such as PhoneGap or Cordova, there is often a setting that defines which domains the application is allowed to send such requests to. In such cases, the extra option request is not really being sent. If you're a Cordova user, refer to this manual listed on screen.